Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Kinnon in a 15 plus 2 game on leechess.org. And he says hello, so let's say hello back in the chat. What shall I play this game? Let's play e4. Let's open with the king's pawn. Hope you're all doing well. The standard games are always popular with the uh, hardcore viewers. These don't get the most views of my videos, but that's not why I make videos. So I really appreciate your positive feedback on this format. I think these are some of the most instructive videos on my channel. So if you're new to this series, do take a look at the archives if you get a chance. You can also search by opening. I often tag the opening in the title of the videos. So yeah, the standard games are where they're at. Okay, so Sicilian, and what shall I play today? I usually play open Sicilian against this, so knight f3 followed by d4. But I also experiment with the Alapin and even the Smith Mora sometimes. I could play a closed Sicilian. Hmm, let's go open. I feel like knight f3 followed by d4. Okay, and a hyper accelerated dragon. Mm -hmm. Okay, d4. You can take with the queen here and hit the rook in the corner, but black plays knight f6. There's some theory there. Let's take with the knight. And on bishop g7, I think I'm going to go for this bind setup. So I'll play c4. And now bishop e3. Defend the center. Okay, all normal stuff. Defend the pawn on e4. Now the key in this type of position is you don't have to commit to playing f3 until knight g4 is actually a threat. Okay, so it's not necessary for me to play that yet. Uh, I'm going to play bishop e2 first. And usually black goes for d6, but I have seen some hybrid approaches where black will play e6 in this setup and sometimes go for d5 as well. So it might be interesting if my opponent tries that. Mm, my layout is a little bit off here. Apologies for that. It's a bit cut off down below, but uh, the board is all clear, so that's the main thing. Okay, so d6, let's castle now. Could also play knight c2 to try to keep my opponent a little bit more cramped, but let's just go ahead and castle. If bishop d7 is played, maybe I will play knight c2, but we'll see. Black can play knight takes d4, bishop takes d4, and then bishop d7. Okay, a6. Yeah, this move is usually unwise. It creates a weakness on b6. So that square is no longer guarded by the black pawn. So I may be able to exploit that in the future. But how best to play now? I'm thinking about queen d2, f3, uh, again knight c2 perhaps. It's not like this move is going to lose on the spot or anything. It's you know still very much a game here. But in my experience, this pawn should usually go to a5 if black's going to play it somewhere. Let's play f3. Okay, so again, knight takes d4, bishop takes d4. Bishop d7 also possible. With the pawn on c4, I have added control over d5. That's one of the reasons to play this setup. Most of the time in the open Sicilian, you don't get to play pawn c4 followed by knight c3 because black is playing a quick knight f6 and attacking the pawn on e4. But sometimes white can sneak that in, like when black plays yeah, g6 on move 2. Black isn't threatening anything in the center. Now one move you sometimes have to be aware of in these positions are queen b6. So that is an option, trying to x-ray this bishop on e3. It's definitely a daredevil move, like queen b6. I can try knight f5 with a discovered attack on the queen and have my knight defend the bishop but black will probably pick off the pawn on b2 against that. I think though on queen b6, I can effectively play knight a4 and ask that black queen where she intends to go. That doesn't look too hot for black because I'll also be defending b2 in the process. So black is thinking right now. And for the record, I think queen d2 was fine on the last move as well, but I am trying to rule out knight g4. Okay, black does capture. And now bishop e6, all right. So natural development for my opponent. Queen d2 would be normal here. 
rook c8 b3 yeah let's play that i'm stopping black from playing b5 i have more than enough defenders on that square so that's promising i can try to sink the knight into d5 but i don't want to do that too soon because black is a bit cramped here it's better to keep black cramped so let's go ahead and play b3 and now knight d7 makes sense trying to swap the dark square bishops and often when black does that you want to retreat the bishop to e3 in this situation and try to keep black cramped even though that will allow this bishop to have quite a bit of scope down the diagonal it's a good idea to keep the dark square bishop but black goes over here interesting i have not seen this approach before maybe black is arguing that on bishop e3 b5 is an idea which is, would also be the case on knight d7 by the way so maybe they can try that here as well this knight may be misplaced i could play f4 if i want inviting a trade here but then taking a look at the knight on h5 Maybe knight f6, pawn f5, something like that. That actually seems decent. Yeah, I'm not liking bishop e3, b5. Almost makes me think I misplayed this move order a little bit. As I'm thinking about knight d7, b5 as well. Maybe I would have had to allow the trade of the dark square bishops. But that's neither here nor there. We're not in that position anymore. Yeah, I'm thinking f4 here. Let's play it. So hit the knight. Pre-move this just in case black plays it. The knight could go back to f6, but that doesn't seem too consistent with what black is trying to do. Swap the dark square bishop, so... I'm inviting black to make that swap right now. And by the way, 15 plus 2 I think is a bit fast for most, most of you out there. If you're looking to improve, I always recommend 15 plus 10. That's a popular time control online, especially on Lee Chess. I think the uh, number of players playing the longer time controls is a bit greater on Lee Chess compared to chess.com, just anecdotally speaking. But yeah, 15 plus 10, I think is a little bit better. 15 plus two, I mostly play it for time considerations just to make these games a little bit quicker, but I'd recommend a longer increment. And black does go back to F6, okay. So I could play F5 here and try to cross black's plans of maybe playing knight D7. I'm also thinking about something like A4 to really clamp down on the B5 square. F5 is the most direct move though, that's for sure. Don't know that I have a good follow-up, though. Bishop d7, because whenever you push pawns, you leave weaknesses in the wake. So the fact that e5 is no longer covered by my f4 pawn, maybe that's something I can improve upon. Hmm, what else makes sense here? Maybe queen e3, trying for bishop e6, but knight d7. Ah, but knight d7, okay. I'm noticing now, if black got another move and played that, then f5 would actually trap the bishop. So maybe I should invite black to play knight to d7. <laughs> maybe that would be a smart thing to do. Maybe I play something innocuous here, like rook d1. Innocuous, but helpful. Black might also play queen a5, though, so I'd like to choose something that helps with that. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, the more I'm looking at this, the more I think I should not play this move. I should wait. Maybe bishop f3? Overprotect the pawn on e4? Mm. Loosens my grip on b5 a little bit, though. And again, I think queen a5 is likely against a lot of these moves.
Even queen e3, queen a5 is possible with ideas like bishop b6, knight g4 with a counterattack, hitting my queen on e3. Bishop takes g4, queen takes c3. So I'm having a bit of a think here, but this does look like an important decision. Rook a d1, it's a pretty useful move because the queen is defended. A lot of times you can meet queen a5 with knight d5 in a situation like that. So queen takes d2, knight takes e7 check, king h8, rook takes on d2. See there is this move at the end though. And maybe I'm not getting much. Still though, it's a consideration. I could also play, let's say, rook a d1, queen a5, then f5. Now we're getting deep down the rabbit hole, but yeah, there's some ideas there, like bishop d7, then knight d5. Queen takes d2, knight takes e7 check, king h8. Rook takes d2, still knight takes e4 at the end. I should be somewhat better there, there though. Okay, let's play this. I spent a long time on that move. Probably too long, but I think the battle, the landscape will hinge on the next few moves in terms of whether I get a stable advantage or not. So let's see what my opponent does. B5, I can just take. And then take with the bishop, very important. I want to keep my knight guarding e4. And on queen a5, the plan is f5 currently. f5 followed by knight d5. What else can black reasonably do here? <clears throat> I thought for a second about bishop g4, but on bishop g4 it looks shaky. I can play bishop takes f6, and then the bishop on g4 will be undefended if black takes back. So bishop g4, bishop takes f6, bishop takes e2, bishop takes g7, I'm hitting the rook, and I'm going to come out ahead in material there. Let's say bishop takes d1, bishop takes f8, if black takes back, I take on d7. Okay, queen d7. I wasn't expecting that. Now again, this bishop starts to look a little cramped. f5, though, is not winning material, as far as I can tell. Knight a4 is interesting trying to jump in here, but I run into this. So maybe I should play a move like h3. That might not be bad. h3 looking for g4. It invites a sacrifice on h3, but I don't think they'll get enough material for that. Just gut instinct. Yeah, let's do that. Nice to play a quick move here. A little bit faster than my previous move. Maybe long term I can go g4 followed by f5. Probably won't play that on the next move or anything, but it's an idea. I'm always looking at b5, though, if black wants to try that. So b5, c takes b5, a takes b5. Cross my mind, maybe bishop takes b5 can be met by knight takes e4. Deflection ideas once again. But I also see on b5, if we get a trade here, I can even throw in bishop takes f6, and then knight takes b5. So I don't quite buy it for black. I think black's going to be down a pawn. I think a move like rook fd8 is pretty likely, and black played that just as I said that. Okay, now this is always an option. <clears throat> if I want to hit that rook, 
maybe try for some sort of e5 move in the future again e5 or f5 on the cards uh, queen e3 perhaps planning bishop b6 kind of like queen e3 because it also helps defend h3 We're pretty con concentrated in the center here, both of us. But my pawns are super helpful. They cover a lot of squares. Yeah, I'm leaning towards queen e3 at the moment. Just looking again if I can force anything like f5. Maybe there's some sort of idea. Ooh, that would be interesting. Like f5, if we get a trade bishop takes f5, and then bishop takes f6, bishop takes f6, knight e5. I see some sneaky stuff. I probably have a lot of compensation there, actually. Ooh, I'd be threatening knight b6 as well. Ooh, and I see if bishop e5, I would have rook takes f5. How's that for some arrows? Hit that, that piece on f5 at the end, and if queen takes f5, there'd be knight takes e7 in that hypothetical line. Do I want to go for this? That explodes the position open, that's for sure. This might be a prime time to do it. There's bishop h4 at the end, but now that I always have knight b6. I like this line, guys. I think I'm going to go for this. All right. We're shifting gears here. We're going from a maneuvering struggle, where I was trying to place my pieces in a way to help me break, to making a break. And we're gonna see how this goes. Bishop takes f5 is forced here. And now bishop takes f6 is the plan. It's counterintuitive. I mean, this is a strong dark square bishop. Normally you wouldn't wanna give this up, but on bishop takes f6, knight, beat knight d5, I think black's gonna have some problems on their hands. There's a great deal of pressure here. And I feel better about playing this when black has already committed their rook to d8. Black should probably play something like rook c6 here, but visually I like my position. I think at minimum I can take and play queen d4. I'm likely to get this. Maybe black can stick the bishop on g6 and just try to hang out and defend. But there's also complicating factors like let's say rook c6, maybe I play queen f4. And then on bishop g6, I can maybe throw in bishop g4 before taking on f6. Various things like that. So tough decision here for black. I think they have to decide on some sort of awkward move. Maybe queen e6 is a consideration. I'm trying to take with the queen on f6, but mm, not looking good. If there's a trade, queen takes f6, I can prob probably play g4 there. I could also meet queen e6 with something like rook d to e1. Although then maybe black plays bishop e5. But remember, the main, the, the crux of this idea is that bishop e5 is met by rook takes f5. And again, there's also knight b6 hanging in the air. So I'm trying to play a dual purpose move with my last move. That's how you can do a lot of tactical damage in chess. You play moves that have multiple threats, multiple purposes, and because chess is a turn-based game and your opponent can only respond one move at a time, if you do that effectively, quite often you're going to be winning material or something great is going to happen to your position. Just a simple concept worth thinking about. The double attack, multi-purpose moves, those are core ideas in chess. Okay, and Black does play this, so that sidesteps knight b6 with the fork, but I have options. Again, this... That feels like I'm selling out a little cheap, though. Uh, I'd more so lean towards this, especially because I notice now bishop e5 can be met by queen g5. Bishop g6, knight takes e7. So this might be an unpleasant move for black to have to face. Ah, unless they have this. Ooh. Ooh, but then I have bishop g4. Bishop takes e1, rook takes e1. 
uh, let's say bishop takes g4, rook takes e6, bishop takes e6, I take e7, I take c8. I'm better in that end game. Queen against a rook and a bishop. I'm also seeing if I can somehow trap their queen. Doesn't look like it though. This bishop's holding a lot of stuff together. Fascinating position right here. Yeah, this rook looks like the missing ingredient right now. Here, bishop h4. Do I like the bishop g4 reply? Or even bishop d3 for that matter. I'm not sure which one's better. I'm going to play it. Okay, time is a concern. My opponent has a 2 to 1 time advantage right here. But I have the initiative, a lot of pitfalls for black to navigate. Okay, bishop e5 is played, but this runs into this rook takes f5 move. Just scanning to see if I missed anything there. I mean, it's good to look at checks, but there's no issue. So yeah, take. And queen takes f5 is met by knight takes e7 with a big fork. A royal fork, in fact. Yeah, and that's huge. That should win me the game. That piece is too important for black. I'm up material. Ideas like bishop g4 are coming. Maybe rook g5. Queen g5 even. That'll be a check. I'm also hitting e7. Too much. Yeah, that's the power of concentrating your breaks. Setting up your pieces in a way where you do break where when you do break it with the pawn, meaning where you initiate a, a clash with your pawns, your pieces are going to be properly positioned, usually behind, to create the maximum amount of uh, damage when the position opens up, when files and diagonals become open by virtue of that pawn clash. So that's what you, what you saw here when I decided to go for f5 here on move 17. Yeah, not much to do here for black. Maybe we'll see a move like king h8. I think there's a pretty good chance because the king wants to hide. It's not comfortable down the g-file like that. But on king h8, I think bishop g4 is a good default move. Threatening discoveries like rook takes e5. Let's say king h8, bishop g4. Queen g6 can be met by knight takes e7 with a fork. So I don't think this is going to last too long. Yeah, Black's Rooks are very passive as well. I wonder about this position. If we go back for a second while black is thinking i do wonder if black has some defense here looks pretty bad i would bet black has to give up the queen somehow black maybe has to play king h8 and then let's say king h8 bishop g4 play bishop takes g4 uh rook takes e6 then bishop takes e6 something like that but king h8 maybe there's even bishop d3 Okay, my opponent did play a move. King h8 was played. And shall I go bishop g4? Looks pretty good. There's other moves up for consideration too, but yeah, I like this one. Creating immediate problems. Rook takes e5. This rook on e1 is defended. So even though black has a couple checks here, doesn't matter. Note that bishop d4 check can be met by queen takes d4 check in reply. So, no concern. Yep, queen g6 was played, and now knight takes e7. It's very likely going to be my move. 
Could also play rook takes e5 first. Some sort of trade like this. Then knight takes e7, but it's not necessary. I don't have to give black queen b6 at the end or something. Um, here, I guess there's queen g7, take bishop c3. But I'm going to be up so much material. Yeah, let's just play it. Mm -hmm. Take. Bishop c3, I'll probably play... Even just queen d1 is fine. I'm going to be up a piece at the end of this line. Once more, just looking to see if there's anything I can do that's a little more forceful. Could even play queen g5. Trade, and then my bishop on c8 would help guard. That's totally fine too, but I think I want black's dark square bishop. Just don't want to blunder something like bishop e3, uh, queen e3, bishop d4. We would not want that. Let's go queen d1. Take. And now on rook takes c8, I have discovered attacks like rook takes f7 makes sense. Going after the rook. Rook h5 also looks really good. Going after h7. I think I'll play rook takes f7 though. Yeah. Pick up another pawn. And if queen takes f7, bishop takes c8, I am up a minor piece and a pawn. Safe king. A little weak on the dark squares, but it doesn't matter. Everything important is, um, is safe for now. Yeah, I'll be very curious what the engine has to say about f5. Felt pretty good, but it's a sharp position and one that the computer may find some sort of reputation. So you never know. Okay, check. If queen f2, I suppose here will be the answer. So uh, that being said, I think queen f2 is fine because let's say check, king here, black can check again, but I can force a queen trade, queen f4. Black's going to have to do something about this rook soon, so let's do that. Go here. Not interested in trying to calculate a mate or anything at this point. With a minute 45, up this amount of material, just get the pieces off the board, make your life easy. Okay, let's take. Black can get a pass pawn, but I take b7. That pawn will be easily held. Bishop takes care of it, no problem. Let's advance this pawn. Go here. If e2, I can even just take. Rook takes e2, c7, and that will be lights out. Because of check, followed by this. Could also play check first, doesn't matter. This is some delicious coffee that I'm drinking at 10.45 p.m., I gotta say. It's just the normal Pike Place roast from Starbucks, but it is, like, surprisingly good tonight. Might be because I'm tired. You never know. <laughs> I'm tired, but I feel like I have a lot of energy at the same time, if that makes any sort of sense. Okay, and my opponent did resign. Interesting battle here. Yeah, I suspect I slightly misplayed the move order round about here. I don't know, though. I mean, black black should probably play knight d7 at this point, but 
I was just pondering the timing of B5 and whether black could successfully get that in, like say knight d7 right at this moment. And if I keep the dark square bishop, as I said that white often wants to, I think b5 was working there. So I probably would have had to pull an audible, call an audible, and on knight d7, done something different. Like, um, I don't know, king h1 or something. Invite the trade and try to squeeze out an advantage there. But I think on black's part, I didn't like their play beginning with knight h5. Yeah, and also I was criticizing a6 a little earlier. A6 is really only a decent move if black can get b5 in later. So I think it hinges on that. But knight h5, f4, knight back. Black's pieces were always a little bit misplaced here. You know, maybe I can play f5 even in this position with the same idea. But somehow I feel it's stronger when the rook is diverted over here away from the black king. But I wouldn't be surprised if the engine shows that f5 was decent here as well with the same plan. Take, take, bishop takes, and then capture f6 and play knight d5. I would still have those threats. Black would still experience similar issues. I think right here, queen e6 is probably losing, if I were to guess. I think black has to play rook c6. Yeah, I think rook c6 is what I would do. Maybe rook c5 as well. That could be helpful, actually, have the rook control along the fifth rank. And this is this is shaky, though, for black. Ah, but you know what I'm noticing as well? Let's say black plays rook c6 or rook c5, doesn't matter. I might be able to play g4, bishop g6, and then rook takes f6. Again, based on this. Although, ah, if the knight's under attack, that's a little bit different. Like rook c5, g4, bishop g6, rook takes f6, could be met by rook takes d5, and then g takes f, uh, e takes f6. Or black could meet g4 with bishop e6 and try to eliminate the knight that way. So yeah, I, I do believe black needs to move the rook here. Let's check it out. Click over to the analysis board. Here, maybe I'll move me over here just to get this out of the way. I know you guys like to see the stats sometimes. Uh, still calculating. I had a 34 average centipon loss, it looks like. One inaccuracy, one mistake. Mistake was E takes F5. Wow. <laughs> In the midst of this idea that I thought was, was good, it actually gives F5 a dubious mark. Is that the inaccuracy? Yep. Okay, interesting. I would not have thought that. I was pretty happy with this. The engine wants me to go queen g5 here. Interesting. Queen g5, wow. Okay, we'll explore that in a second. Uh, you guys can't see this, but my opponent's stats were one inaccuracy, one mistake, two blunders for a 63 average centipon loss. Okay, so yeah, this is the hyper accelerated dragon. It compares to the accelerated dragon, which is this move order. Black plays knight c6 on move two and then g6. With the hyper accelerated dragon, black is getting that bishop to the g7 square immediately. And they have a little bit more flexibility sometimes this way. Uh, so does white though, like white can play queen takes d4. Again, that's a major line here. If we look at our little database, which you can do by clicking this book icon when you're in an analysis board or a study on Lee Chess, do take advantage of those, by the way, those tools. And you can see the breakdown here. I always have the master's database selected by default, by the way. Occasionally I'll look at the Lee Chess database too, but I want the highest quality games to look at. So yeah, I took with the knight, it's more popular. And again, usually in the open Sicilian, white cannot play c4 followed by knight c3 because black will be attacking the e4 pawn too quickly. But here with the way black's developing, White can do this if they want, aiming for this arguably more harmonious development with the knight behind the c-pawn. Those of you who've watched my chess fundamental series, remember where I talked about the happy marriage that exists in many openings, where if you can get the knight behind the c-pawn, that's a happy marriage. Uh, the c-pawn behind the knight, an unhappy marriage. That doesn't apply to all openings, but it's worth thinking about. Like This is generally a better arrangement because white has... Uh, a freer position, more control over d5 as well. 
Okay. Yeah, this is all mainline stuff. D6, castles. Yeah, and A6 has been played here. It's the third most popular move. But a lot more common is bishop D7. This is a line that I've played from the white side a ton. I think the stats are fairly drawish in this variation. But here you can see the pawn going to A5, trying to clamp down on some squares like B4 in this position. And B3, knight D7, you'll see here the main move for white in this position, bishop E3, also bishop bishop F2 gets played some. White tries to pr preserve this bishop. White wants to keep black cramped because white has more space. White doesn't want to allow uh, so many exchanges here, which might allow black to free their position over time. So yeah, that's why I was constantly referencing knight D7 and the possibility of a dark square bishop trade. Now there's a bunch of games that have been played here. I remember studying some uh, theory from this book, Openings for White According to Kramnik by Alexander Holifman back in like the early 2000s where he analyzed this line out of the English opening, actually. This can happen out of the English opening from White's point of view. And I think he even goes like as far as this position and you know talks about the theory. I know some of these moves don't make a lot of sense on site, but generally White is trying for this in the future. So if you're into this line for either color, I would recommend investigating this stuff. There's a lot to be said for, for looking at these positions if you play this. But yeah, black played a6, and now I went f3. Looks like there's not a great consensus here. Queen d2 is the main move. Rook c1 is played a lot. f3 is played a fair amount. Okay, that's fine. It takes d4. Again, queen b6, interesting idea. Trying to get cute, attack the pawn here. Maybe looking for queen d2, uh, knight takes e4. Trying to attack the queen. This would be a nice little shot for black. Something like that, trying to win a pawn. But I don't buy it. Queen b6 can be met by, let's say, knight a4, as I was describing. Possibly some other move here, too. Yeah, knight a4 is up there, queen d3. Computer doesn't like it for black. So instead, we got a trade here, bishop e6. Okay, this has all been played. We're still in some mainline stuff. Rook c8, b3. All right, and here we have a divergence from theory. The engine says white's a half pawn better, but that's not very much at this stage of the game. And black has played knight d7 and also queen a5 in the past. Eight games with both of those. Knight d7. Yeah, white usually trades. Again, probably because bishop e3 can be met by this b5 move I was mentioning. That is the case. And then black's setup looks great because the rook on c8 and the bishop on g7, they're combining to attack c3. This would be a disaster for white. White's probably already a little bit worse here because I can't move this c-pawn. So I think that's how, how black should play. Knight d7. Again, there's some games here. F4, trying to cramp that bishop. It's a fight. But I suspect black's doing all right now that they've traded the dark square bishops. Okay. So instead, knight h5. And I went ahead and played f4. Let me just flick on the engine here. Yep, engine likes f4. So I'm targeting this guy. I'm willing to take there if it gives black double isolated pawns. It messes up their king safety. And the computer says black should trade and then go back to f6. But I think I've achieved something by playing this f4 move. Black has wasted some time with their knight. It's giving a line like this and then b4 or even g4, gaining a bunch of space. Now there are some weaknesses in the wake, like that e5 square most notably. But I can see how white is better here. Still, that, that seems like a better attempt for black. Okay, I spent a lot of time on this next move, move 15, rook ad1. And it looks like what the engine is suggesting, uh, it likes semi-waiting moves, useful moves here. It was showing rook ad1 for a second. Yeah, it's the second choice right here. Queen e3, a4. All right, so yeah, I spent longer than I would have liked. I went from 11.22 to 7.42 here. So, you know, almost a four-minute think, three-and-a-half-minute think, but... 
Yeah, I think it was worth it in the sense that I, I started to understand what was going on here. Rook AD1 is helpful because the queen is defended. Again, if something like queen A5, I was really considering the ramifications of stuff like this jumping in. And there's this in-between check. This is a theme in this opening. Again, trying to give you some takeaways if you play this stuff. Throwing that check in and only then recapturing. And if black takes here, yeah, I guess I can do something like this. Check. Interesting. King h6, rook d4. This looks sketchy for black. Black has multiple things under attack here. Sorry for the fan noise once again. I did get my new computer, so I'll be uh, <laughs> I'll be rolling that out in the next couple weeks. I sincerely hope so. No more fan noise after this. We'll have to give the fan a proper send off. <laughs> the computer will run a lot quieter than this one than this uh, 2013 era desktop. So queen d7. Yeah, it's a tough position for black. I think black's just cramped and they're staring down the barrel of f5. Again, knight d7. It's too late now because I got f4 in. I can go for f5. And I should say about the f4 move, by the way, like I played f3 way back here. Generally playing f4 is not wise early on, but sometimes white will play f2, f4 and try to bypass the whole f3 thing. But do be advised that if you do it too early, it can be a weakening move. But I think once we settle into this position, the breaks favor white. Black's b5 move, I know the engine is suggesting it here, but probably just loses a pawn. Wow, queen b2. I don't think I would play queen b2 here. What's the idea in this position? If I take... Okay. Bishop g4. That's a little weird. I'm not too worried about this, I would say, on a practical level. But I guess the computer's take is that black is not, not better in the center and on the king side, so they should take their chances trying to open the queen side here even at the cost of a pawn. So queen d7, and yeah, looks like I can play this f5 move right away. h3 is the second best move. That's what I played in this position. But the engine says, you know what? Just go for it, f5. And it, it doesn't even want to play e takes f5 after this. That's the interesting part. It's showing that line as well, but it really likes this queen g5 move. That's fascinating. So trying to play e takes f5 with the queen's help. And let's just say black takes here. Black's going to run into stuff like this. And it'll be good knight on g7. Or good queen supported by the bishop in this case. Wow, queen g5. That's a tough move, though. It's hard to conceive of that. And if h6, queen g3 is good, apparently. I probably have similar ideas coming, like take and then knight d5. There's a pin here. I'm controlling the h5 square too, so the knight can't jump here. Wow. That's that's worth remembering. Very hard to find in a game. I mean, if you're playing f5 as white, I think you're almost always going to be thinking about playing e takes f5 in reply. That's a cool idea. So I played h3 to stop bishop g4, but yeah, it looks like I could have played f5 even there. And then I went for it. Yeah, g4 is playable too, but it does give black a chance to go here and maybe retreat the bishop, although the engine loves this for white as well. But f5 take, and it's going to say queen g5 again. Yeah, so it, it likes this with similar pent-up tactical ideas here for white. But can black defend after this? Take. Bishop takes. It is possible to take with a pawn here, by the way. As ugly as that looks. I'd still go knight d5, threatening this and threatening this. Yeah, unpleasant here. I guess the engine's saying black should even just give up an exchange and try to fight. Okay, now here, I said I thought rook c6 or rook c5 was the only thing black can do. Uh, b5 as well. I guess the idea of b5 is that knight here can be met by queen a7 with the pin. How to go for rook c5? What's my best bet here? 
It's more than plus one for white, so I'm happy about that. But my instincts were correct that white has just a ton of play here for the pawn. Bishop d3, okay. Bishop d3, what gives here? So if takes, queen takes, white's just doing really well, apparently. What if something like bishop e5? Ooh, rook takes f7, nasty. Rook takes f7, <laughs> and we're converging on h7 here, and black's going to get crushed, apparently. All the pieces in the attack. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. The line opening going on here is nice for white. Black's pieces are uncoordinated. The knight on d5 is a beast, creating threats here and here. Oof, yeah, bishop d3. This is the linchpin to black's defense, this bishop on f5. So, simple as that, just get rid of it. That's why I was also looking at g4 right after the game when I was mentioning this. But this seems less effective. Yeah, bishop e4 can be played. I don't get to do fun stuff like this because black gets to eliminate my knight first. That being said, yeah, I'm happy with f5. Even though there is the queen g5 move, it's stronger. I mean, this is... Given the time control and, you know... The idea is that black has to grapple with here to even get a semi-survivable position. I'm totally happy with what I did. So queen e6. And yep, rook de1. It's one of the top moves. Also says I can take on f6 and play bishop f3. That appeals to me less. Let's get all the pieces involved in the attack. I love that. Yeah, I'm threatening bishop d3 or bishop g4. One little line I mentioned is if bishop h4... I can go here, attacking the queen. Temporarily give up the exchange, but I should be winning. Uh, I think I even mentioned a line similar to this, where at the end, I don't think it was exactly this line, but some situation where I wind up with queen versus rook and bishop. I guess here I'm winning the bishop with queen c3. But uh, that, that may be the best that black can get, some iteration of that. Queen e5 could be played. Uh, queen e5 is interesting. Trying to go queen d4 check if I go here or here. But I can also take... Queen takes is met by g4 with the pin. E takes f6, probably just met by a bishop move. Oh, there is the check, though. Oh, yeah, that's, that's actually a little bit tricky. Bishop f3, queen c5... I'd have to switch into strategic mode here. White's still a lot better here, despite being down a pawn. But it's not a direct win of material yet. Mm. Yeah, queen e5 was probably, practically speaking, the only way to go here. With the sneaky queen d4 idea. wonder if I play king h1. Then black can go back. And black's clinging to life. But as played, bishop e5, and I get to land rook takes f5, a tactical threat I was constantly looking at. And again, queen takes f5 is met by knight takes e7. And the rest was a cleanup job. Too much material. I'm just kind of looking at the eval over here. I don't think there's really much to discuss. Just a matter of reducing the risk here and winning in a comfortable fashion. So I gave up the bishop for the pawn, but this pawn's unstoppable. Again, I could also give a check and then push here, and this pawn's going to promote. But even c7 at the end, whether black plays rook c2 or rook e8, I'm playing rook b8 followed by promotion. All right. Fascinating, hyper-accelerated game. I think there was a lot of ideas there. Hope you guys liked it. Uh, again, thanks to those who stuck around during the analysis. I really appreciate that. I know a lot of people... Um, don't have the time to to watch these longer videos i fully recognize that that's a thing but even though videos are not the best way to improve they can be an, a component of your improvement and they can act as inspiration i hope it's helpful to see how uh, an international master like me goes through my games and the level of detail that i try to apply to my games play your longer games and please 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 analyze them afterwards don't just, whatever time control you're playing, play one game and then immediately forget about it. You got to have this curiosity. You got to have this drive to want to look at these things, even beyond what the, what the engine is saying. 
You know, like before I'm clicking into these games, I'm trying to draw some conclusions on my own. I want to uh, have my decisions be be validated or refined by the engine, not driven by the engine exclusively. Okay, so I highly encourage you to use the engine, but use it selectively, and maybe even make a, a Lee Chess study on your own. You can do that by going to learn and then study. I'm going to make a video on that someday, showing you the best practices there. But at minimum, go through your games a little bit. Look at the database. Again, that's the little book icon here. Uh, try to pinpoint the moments where the engine says you could have improved. And even consider where your opponent could have improved. I'm trying to equally weight my opponent's resources and my resources whenever I'm going through a game. It's not about who won or lost. It's about the truth and the position. All right, so thank you guys very much. This is a fun one. And I'll be back again soon with another video. Bye, guys.